Ken Leon Guerrero wearing my community advocate hat today. As you know, I've been dancing with Guam Memorial Hospital a lot lately, pursuing information about how the administration is managing the public health care lifeboat that is meant to provide service for those of us without the financial means to seek treatment in Los Angeles or Manila. And I've issued a number of FOIAs. I've uncovered a lot of ugly stuff about Guam Memorial Hospital over starting from the beginning of the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. And with my latest round of Freedom of Information Act requests, I've even been arrested in my efforts trying to get the kind of information that, that government officials should be willing to give to the public freely. To the point where after my last FOIA, my information request was denied because the attorney for the, for the head of GMH, Lillian Posadas, has determined that the information I'm requesting is discussionary in nature and he claims it's not subject to a Freedom of Information Act request. I differ because the discussionary uh, exemption he's claiming does not exist in Guam law. Therefore, it's just an illusion as far as I'm concerned. So I went to the court today to file a motion for summary judgment to have the court declare that uh, the Guam Memorial Hospital was in violation of compliance with the Freedom of Information Act. And then, you know, in order for me to file this document right here that I've created, I'm going to have to come up with another $250, which is another step in a long road of actions by this administration to minimize the ability of citizens to hold public servants accountable. Starting with my uh, lawsuit against the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration after one of the first bills they signed into law, Bill 30, which gutted Guam Memorial Hospital financially and has cost taxpayers somewhere between 10 and $20 million a year over the past four years. And uh, this went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is now in session. The Honorable Robert J. Torres, Associate Justice presiding. Would the clerk please call the case? This is Supreme Court case number CBA 20-008, Joaquin V. Leon Guerrero, individually and as a taxpayer, plaintiff appellant versus government of Guam Department of Administration, and Edward Byrne in his capacity as Director, Defendant's Appellants. Appearing for the Plaintiff Appellant is Attorney Braddock J. Huseman. Appearing for the Defendant's Appellees is Attorney, Attorney Jordan Lawrence Paloon. The panel consists of Associate Justice Robert J. Torres, Associate Justice Catherine A. Merriman, and Justice Pro Tem John A. Manglonia. Attorney Huseman reserves 10 minutes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Attorney Huseman, you may proceed. Good morning, Your Honors. My name is Braddock J. Huseman. I represent Mr. Leon Guerrero. May it please the court. This case began as a simple taxpayer case and has changed into something quite different. Now it is a case that involves this court's jurisdiction uh, standing, and even the separation of powers. The Superior Court of Guam dismissed Mr. Leon Guerrero's taxpayer suit because he lacked a sufficiently concrete injury to satisfy the injury requirements found in the Article Three of the United States Constitution. The Superior Court came to that decision because of this court's opinion in what the briefing papers refer to as the airport case, in Ray AB Wanpat International Airport Authority a two-year-old case. The Superior Court interpreted a few paragraphs of dicta within the airport case to conclude that in all cases in Guam, courts require a federal Article III standing analysis, particularly as it pertains to injuries. The Superior Court's interpretation, however, is incorrect. The U.S. Constitution does not mandate Article III requirements on the island of Guam, and neither does the Organic Act. In fact, the requirement of an Article III injury, in fact, upends literally decades of case law on Guam. Worse, 
the requirement of an Article III injury in fact in all cases as an irreducible minimum, jeopardizes a host of Guam statutes, as well as this court's own original jurisdiction and several opinions rendered thereunder. Mr. Leon Guerrero asked that this court reverse the Superior Court's decision, that it harmonize its case law, and that it remand the case to the Superior Court for further proceedings. With my time today, I'd like to discuss three main points. First, there is no irreducible minimum of a case or controversy requirement on Guam. Second is that the Superior Court erred in its interpretation of the airport case. And finally, that if the uh, Superior Court's decision is allowed to stand, if this court does not harmonize its case law, there are catastrophic implications for jurisprudence on Guam. Supreme Court of Guam, the justices ruled that citizens do not have the right to hold government officials and politicians accountable. As a senator in the 37th Guam legislature, I am going to change those laws because the worst thing that happens to the people is when politicians get the mistaken idea that we work for them. And that's what they believe right now. So now I'm gonna to switch to my candidate hat. Now candidate Ken Leon Guerrero, number 14 on the Republican side, candidate for the 37th Guam legislature is asking your help with your vote so I can represent you from the floor of the legislature. Because if I was a senator, I would be able to get the kind of information from Guam Memorial Hospital as a senator that I can't get as a citizen. And that is not right. A citizen should be able to get any and all information needed to, to determine how the people we hire with our votes are managing assets and money in our name. Please vote for me. I'm Ken Leon Guerrero, number 14 on the Republican side of the ballot. And with a vote for me, when I'm elected, I will help restore the power of citizen control over the political process. And you can bet the politicians don't want that to happen.